Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's try to get a better understanding of the shear forces and the moments on each of the sections as we traverse across the beam. What we're going to do is imagine we're going to look at those forces here, 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 and here, and then surmise what they'll be at the very end of the beam. In each case, we're going to find what the shear force is and what the moment is at those particular points. The first point C is just to the right of force A, so that basically the distance is equal to zero, and so we have a very thin section. The shear force, well, to find that, what we need to do is we need to find the sum. So to find the, the shear forces, we always need to find the sum of the forces in the y direction. And there's always going to be equal to zero, which means we're going to have the force of A, which is a positive 100 newtons, minus the shear force coming down over here. So you can see there's a shear force. We look at two forces there, that's V sub C. And then if we move V sub C over there, we can say that the, the shear force at C is equal to 100 newtons. So we can place that over here, 100 newtons. The moment at C, well, that's going to have to be zero. Let me explain why. The sum of the moments about this point right there. So first we're going to look at that point, which is this point right here. And when we sum up all the moments, they must add up to zero. And the only force contributing to the moment would be the 100 Newton force, the reaction force at A. But since the moment arm is only zero, that would be equal to, well, we have the moment here. So what we're going to do is write 100 Newtons. And we're going to have to make that negative 100 because that will cause a clockwise moment about that point. That would be negative 100 Newtons times zero because essentially that distance is zero. And then we have the positive moment because it's a counterclockwise direction that would be here at C. Moment at C would be plus moment at C, but then you can clearly see at that moment, moment at C must equal zero. So the moment here is zero for that particular occasion. Now let's move over one meter. Now let's look at the force of the beam over there. Now we have the beam looking like this. Again, notice that we have the two forces balancing out the reaction force at A and the shear force at the other side of the section. The section is one meter long, so therefore we see that V sub D also must be 100 newtons because the shear force here must kind of balance out the force at A. But the moment at D is now going to be different. What we can see here is that when we take the sum of the moments, hmm, I need some more space here because I don't have enough room to work it out here. I'm going to go over here. So this is for section D. The sum of the moments must add up to zero. And so the first moment that we have is caused by the reaction force at A. Here's our pivot point. It's going to give us a negative moment. That would be a negative 100 Newtons multiplied times one meter because the distance from the, um, distance from the, from the line of action of force to the pivot point here would be one meter. And then we add to that the moment at D that would be this one right here. There would be internal forces causing a moment pushing back against this moment inside the beam, which means that the moment at D is going to be equal to 100 Newton meters. When we move this to the other side, it becomes positive. So we know that the moment of D is going to be 100 Newton meters. How about at C? What if we now have the point over here, two meters away from the left side of the beam? Again, V sub B, the shear force, will have to be 100 newtons again because the shear force here is counterbalancing the reaction force at A. So nothing really has changed, even though the length of the beam changes. These are the only two forces working in a vertical direction, which means that V at E again has to be 100 newtons. But now the moment at E is going to be twice as big as it is here. Notice when we do this at E, the sum of the moments must add up to zero, which is equal to minus 100 newtons for the reactionary force at A, but now times two meters because the moment arm from the line of action of the force here to there, this is now two meters. Our pivot point is over here. So the moment caused by this force is going to be this force, 100 newtons times two meters. And then we have to add the moment at E to that. This is the internal forces of the beam pushing back, giving a moment force in this direction, counteracting this moment. So you can see that in that case, the moment at E is going to be equal to 300, oh, not 300, I'm getting ahead of the game, 200 Newton meters. 
that will be 200 Newton meters. All right, continuing, now we're going to take the section out to F. This is now three meters away from the left side. V sub F is still going to be 100 Newtons. The reason for that is that the shear force over here, you can see the shear force over here, is counterbalancing the reaction force at A. But the moment here, now notice, if the pivot point is over here, the moment created by F sub A is now going to be 100 Newtons times 3 meters, which is 300 Newton meters, counterbalanced by the internal moment of the forces inside the beam here. So this is now going to be 300 Newton meters. The next section is going to be just prior to where the load is acting, just prior to that point. You can consider this to be 4 meters long. There's your section. Again, the shear force is counterbalancing F sub A, which means that the Shear force at G is also 100 newtons. And the moment now, now we have a moment arm of 4 meters. So 100 newtons times 4 meters is 400 newton meters. But now what happens when we look at the section right after the load right here? Now we have something different. And I'll need a little bit more room to work that out. Because now when we're trying to find the shear force over here at H, notice we have another force over here. This load force is equal to 300 newtons. And the reaction force at A is equal to 100 newtons. Notice that we already have 300 newtons pushing this way, 100 newtons pushing up, which is a net force of 200 newtons going down, which means we have a shear force of 200 newtons going in the opposite direction, which is con contrary to the direction, the, the standard direction of, of the shear force at H. Again, let me sum up the forces. So we could say that the sum of the forces in the y direction, and now we're looking at section H at point H is equal to zero. So we have 100 newtons going up minus 300 newtons coming down. That's the load force right here. The load force right here, 300 newtons. And I'm going to add to that, well actually subtract because I have my arrow in the down direction. So it's minus V of H. If I now solve for V of H, I move V of H over here, I can see that V of H is equal to 100 newtons minus 300 newtons, which is minus 200 newtons. So we have a negative shear force at this location, which means that it's actually acting in the opposite direction than the arrow is drawn, minus 200 newtons. The moment at H, again, notice that the shear force, or I should say the, the load force, is not at all contributing to the moment here because it's right going right to the pivot point. The only force adding to the moment is this force, which is the same situation as here. We have 100 newtons times 4 meters, which is 400 newton meters. Nothing else happening. So the internal moment, M sub H, is counteracting that at 400 newtons per meter, or 400 newton meters, I should say. And finally, let's go ahead and take a look at point I here. V sub I is now going to be the shear force at this point, notice that the situation is exactly the same as it was over here. You already have the 100 newton force pushing this way. We have the shear force at negative 200 newtons this way over here. And we had a load force of 300 newtons this way. So 100 newtons up, 300 newtons down, which means the shear force has to come up and it has to therefore be minus 200 newtons. And finally, the moment at I. Okay, for that we're going to do the sum of the moments at I is equal to zero. So let's sum them all up. So we have now a five meter moment arm for force A. That means we have 100 newtons. It'll be negative 100 newtons because I'll give us a negative moment, minus 100 newtons, times the five meters. And then here we have the, the load force here, which is equal to 300 newtons. And this causes a counterclockwise moment, which means plus 300 newtons times only one meter, because this line of action force is only one meter away from the end of that section. And then we have to add, because it's a counterclockwise direction, we have to add m sub i. So solving for m sub i, m sub i is equal to, when we move this to the other side, we get a plus 500 newton meters. And we move this to the other side, we get a minus 300 newton meters, which is equal to a positive 200 newton meters for the moment at I. 200 newton meters. 
And finally, when we get to the very end, when we get this end right here, notice that this moment of the load will counterbalance the load of S sub A because it will be 100 newtons times 6 meters in one direction, and we have 300 newtons times 2 meters in the other direction. 2 times 300 is 600, 6 times 100 is 600. They will balance each other out, and at the final point of the beam right here, the moment will be zero again. So notice that for the first section of the beam, the shear force will be 100 newtons, 100 newtons, 100 newtons, 100 newtons, 100 newtons. Simply, the shear force is counterbalancing F sub A. When we get past the load right here, then we have a net force of 300 down, 100 up. That means a net force of 200 down. So the shear force compensates for that by having a negative 200 newtons in this direction. And if we then look at the moment, notice that the moment is zero there. And the moment begins to grow, the farther out you go, the more the beam will begin to bend, the more the internal forces have to try to counteract that, the greater the internal moment becomes, 100 newton meters, 200 newton meters, 300 newton meters, 400 newton meters. And now on the other side, since you're getting closer to this, this end of the beam where it's supported by F sub B, then you can see that you go from 400 newton meters to 200 newton meters and eventually to zero newton meters when you get to the end of the beam. So you can see that the the moment the internal moment goes up, gets to the load force, and then comes back down over here. On the next video, we'll show you a graphical way of representing that. But at least here you can see that you can calculate the shear and the moment at various points of the beam to get a feel of how that changes as you go from one end of the beam to the other end of the beam, depending upon where the load forces are and where the support forces are in the beam. And that's how that's done.